There's this beautiful quality of art, whether that comes across in uh, fiction, the novel, uh, poetry, film, um, painting, any expression of art. Um, we've seen that some of the most troubled uh, people uh, with the most inner turmoil, they have turned to art as an expression of how either coping or an expression of articulating and lamenting and, and grieving. Um, what in the world of art and, and what, what is it about the making of art uh, or the um, taking in the uh, appreciation of art that helps us deal with suffering? Well, I think the artist, by his or her nature, is, has to be kind of good art, has to be kind of tuned into the real world in a very fundamental way. And just as the students at the beginning, when you ask them whether they wanted the suffering relieved, I think one of the things, you get the suffering relieved, you often get your sensitivities and your mm. perception of the world. And I think artists have a great sense of perceiving the world clearly in and, uh, that, and that kind of sense. And uh, I'm particular, one of the things I'd like to maybe share a little bit about is poetry, which I think you see in poets. I am not a poet, <laughs> but I really appreciate the poetry of others. They manage to, to do great things. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kierkegaard wrote, what is a poet? An unhappy person who conceals profound anguish in his heart, but whose lips are so formed that as sighs and cries pass over them, they sound like beautiful music. Mm -hmm. And I think that's some of what the artist can do in expressing that. And uh, an example of that might be this Levertov poem that I brought uh, for today, Please which share. is, um, it's called Talking to Grief by Denise Levertov. Ah, grief, I should not treat you like a homeless dog who comes to the back door for a crust for a meatless bone. I should trust you. I should coax you into the house and give you your own corner, a worn mat to lie on, your own water dish. You think I don't know you've been living under my porch. You long for your real place to be readied before winter comes. You need your name, your collar and tag. You need the right to warn off intruders, to consider my house your own, and me your person, and yourself my own dog. This poem reminds me of uh, one of the other kinds of art that you brought up, uh, fiction sometimes, yeah. uh, when characters go through difficult circumstances. Yeah. And I think often what those what, what uh, appreciating uh, those forms of art can do for people, as with this pathway, is it provides kind of uh, glimmers of the pathway ahead. It, it shows the trajectory that others have taken through grief and suffering mm -hmm. and allows for new possibilities of how oneself might then go through uh, uh, the suffering or grief that, that's on our plate. Yeah. So I think there's almost kind of a it's a it's it's a word that's a little reductionistic. It doesn't quite fit, but there's almost like a modeling that happens, right? Mm -hmm. An exemplar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, an exemplar. I like yeah. that word more. Uh, that that can be presented to us. It it suggests that that the way of lament is a well worn mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds us, of it, and this is the work of I think the artist in 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 communicating communicating it. It reminds us that we're not alone. Uh, film that I've shown in class uh, is a film called 13 Conversations About One Thing. Have you ever seen that? It's a very kind of an unknown film and in some ways it feels like a downer because there's quite a lot of suffering happening in this movie. So when I show it in class I have to say I think this is a positive film ahead of time <laughs> so that people don't kind of go down the tubes in the negative parts of it. But it uh, describes people who um, are have situations of suffering in their lives that were undeserved, undeserved suffering. Mm -hmm. And the responses of those around them, both good and not good to that, it 
shows how maybe this young woman who had kind of a difficult life and is really well-intentioned, good person, ends up being hit by a car. <laughs> Why would this happen? And ultimately, she, she does come out of it okay in the end. Not everything wonderful, but it does deepen her understanding of the world. But the guy who hits her is this really lawyer who's just full of himself. And he does a hit and run. And it ends up really getting into him and transforming the way he views the world. And one of the things that the film does really well, I think, is sets up this issue of finding meaning in the world well. It's not a theological film, but it shows how things don't always work out the way they ought to for the good guys, but that how good can be found in the middle of uh, very difficult circumstances. And the way it approaches time is really interesting and how we envision time in the world. And I think somehow you immerse yourself in a film and it can be quite transformative in the way you see suffering in the world. And I'm not a great film goer. I'm sure there are other films that do this uh, as well. Mm.